If the international phonetic alphabet has symbols and sounds you haven't mastered yet, it's time for IPA and IPAs with Molly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to IPA and IPAs. Um, usually we're talking about phonetics and beer, but today we're just talking about beer because I have a very special guest. I'm joined tonight by my sister-in-law, Riley Wetzel, and um, she is here to help me learn about IPAs so I can hopefully grow to like them because I don't like them yet. Um, and so Riley um, kindly agreed to lead us through a beer tasting so we can know about what we're doing. So welcome, Riley. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, thanks, Molly, for having me. I this is really exciting. I love um, I love talking about beer and um, yeah. So what do you do? Have some what's, fun. Your, what's your job with beer? Um, so so my background in, is in quality assurance. Um, in the brewing industry. So um, I've worked for a couple of other uh, breweries in the past where I've just um, um, done microbiology for them or done quality assurance management. Um, and what that means is, you know, from the, from the, you know, raw ingredients to brewing into fermentation and packaging and then storing the beer long-term, my job has been to make sure that throughout that whole process, quality and consistency is seen throughout. So um, making the beer, testing it to make sure it meets expectations, mm -hmm. and then overall training people um, in sensory so they know and understand what they're tasting and can, um, you know, we can get communication, like straightforward communication about what we're tasting. And um, yeah, because really, if, if, you know, you can put beer through any type of, you know, analytical method or microbiological analysis and if it doesn't taste good then no one wants to drink it so, <laughs> so yeah sensory is um, super important but um, right now I'm in um, my husband and I moved back to Kansas City and I'm working for a brewery called Alma Mater Brewing uh, in Kansas City Missouri and I'm kind of on the opposite side now I'm on I'm brewing and cellaring and kind of helping them develop their quality control and quality assurance uh, techniques too. So I get to be like even more hands-on and it's really cool. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. And we talked about, we're doing a, are you leading us through a sensory tasting? Is that the right yeah, way? Yeah. So, so um, you were, you were talking to me about how like, you just don't understand why people like IPAs and like, what is the big deal? It's so I, I picked out like three American like good uh, American IPAs that um, both of us had access to. <laughs> Since you're in Texas and I'm in uh, Kansas City, um, so yeah, like three good American IPAs that a lot of people know about, and um, they just really, um, they really have the essence of what an American IPA is. And I thought we could just go through a sensory of all three of them and like maybe understand a little bit more about why IPAs taste like they do. <laughs> and, and maybe like, maybe uh, we can find a little, we can find something that you like a little bit more. You appreciate um, it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So where are we starting? Um, so let's go ahead and start with uh, Bell's uh, Two-Hearted Ale. Okay. Um, so yeah, like when, you, when you're, first of all, when you're doing sensory analysis, I've got my glass right here. When you're doing a sensory analysis, you wanna wanna pour. Um, usually start pouring by on the side of the glass and then bring it up. So you have like a nice, nice uh, head of foam right there. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Um, and and what that does is it it really lets um, you don't want too much foam because that's not fun and hard to drink and looks ugly, but but the foam. Um, and letting all the all that carbonation come out, mm -hmm. all the CO2 bubbles are bringing aromatic compounds with it. Okay. Um, so a properly properly car carbonated beer is going to really bring out those aromatic compounds, so the hops, the ester compounds that come from yeast fermentation, um, and all that good stuff that when you're smelling smelling a good beer, that's 
that's where you're getting it. So yeah, just do a little little swirl to get those things to get those guys going. Oh, and then I like to do what's called a flyby. Okay. Do a little swirl, and then you do a flyby your nose, and kind of give it a sniff. So if there's any like crazy like crazy harsh aromatics, depending on what beer it is, you're gonna smell it right away and kind of keep a note in your head. And then you're not totally overwhelming your sensory. So you do a little flyby, kind of familiarize yourself with it. And then you can take some, take some brief sniffs and inhale a little bit more deeply and just kind of note like, okay, what am I smelling? What, what do I like? What's, what flavors come to mind? It's there anything like that comes to mind? Grapefruit? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's most, this is weird. It, it kind of smells like a tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, like, like, let's talk about hops a little bit. So, okay. um, Bell's Two Hearted is a, let's, I got some notes out actually, cause I didn't want to say anything not true. Um, um, 7%, uh, um, ABV IPA, um, the international bittering units are 55. So that's just really a scale of how bitter the beer tastes. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's hopped with uh, centennial hops. So we're going to get some like, we should get some, um, uh, a lot of citrus on the notes. Uh, citrus, um, there's going to be some like, like herbal and like black pepper. Um, and some of those notes. So like you hit it on the head with grapefruit. Okay. Um, and really like those notes are coming from the hops. Okay, that's um, from the centennial hops? Yeah. So tasting this, do I just look for like the notes that we were smelling? Oh, right. So, so that's basically when you're, when you're adding hops to uh, the boil in beer. So, so you have your, your malted barley, you have your hot water and they get mixed in to make a tea that's called wort. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to boil that wort to sterilize it. And you're also adding your hops to make sure to get them soluble. So that itself is the bittering units that you're tasting. What you're actually smelling is what's called dry hopping. So, oh. so that's when hops are added to a beer after it's cooled down and the yeast has been added. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're not, you're not getting all those, um, all those like lepulin, um, lepulin gland, like some, some hops, depending on the variety are more for air, have more aromatic compounds and some hops are better for, um, stabilizing beer. They have more alpha acids and things like that. Or like the hops that have more aromatics, those would be the hops you would dry hop with? Exactly, okay. exactly. So you would add a certain amount of those depending on what variety you like to your beer. And that's where you're getting the aromatics. So um, the range is huge, but most American ops are very, um, they're really in your face. So you're gonna get a lot of like black currant or um, spicy or, floral or herbal or pine if you're saying tree like it might it might be a little bit of um maybe some pine or maybe some um I mean some hops are just gra like they're just grassier um but <laughs> centennial is typically more like more like citrus okay. um grapefruit like you said yeah it definitely um, smells like grapefruit yeah I agree Do you, so when you taste it, do you taste like black pepper and currant and stuff? Um, what do I taste? Um, so I guess I'm, I'm noticing like, um, this is a little bit uh, more malty than most IPAs are. So okay. I'm tasting like, I'm tasting like a little bit, it's a little bit, um, sweet has like a nice, like, uh, caramel, like a caramel, like a soft caramel malty taste. Okay. So I'm getting a lot of that. Um, the bitterness, um, and it, and it's, it's pretty, it is bitter. Um, our, 
you know, from all of these beers that have been so heavily hopped, it's kind of like our scale of bitter is like out the window. Whereas like, this is a nice solid 55 IBU. It's kind of like right in the middle where it needs to be. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's kind of bitter, but it actually like, it is, <laughs> it is bitter. Yeah. Well, yeah. From um, someone who doesn't normally drink IPAs, I took a sip and I was like, yeah, <laughs> really bitter. <laughs> And it's mellowing out the more I take sips, the more I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I get, I get a nice, like, um, orange blossom, grapefruit, uh, grapefruit peel aroma. I smell maybe a little bit of black pepper. Um, um, when you're, when you're tasting beer, you also want to you also something you want to kind of think about is um the weight of it on your tongue and like you know is it is it a full-bodied beer or is it something like um like for example like a Bud Light or something would have a way lighter body or like yeah. water or something um or like the carbonation level um and these are just kind of things to think about when you're um I guess maybe not a lot of people would be judging beers, but just kind of like how they, you know, what's the consistency like, or like, what do I, what do I really like out of beers? Do I like, you know, high carbonated or do I like a full body or do I like something that kind of sits on my palate for a while and that bitterness or that sweetness lingers, or do I like something that kind of goes right away and then I'm ready for another drink. So yeah. it's kind of things to consider too. This one I think this has creamy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I can see that. But yeah, this has a nice full body. Mm -hmm. It leaves a little bit of like malty sweetness on your tongue and like a touch of bitterness, but it's not, it doesn't linger. I mean, it does linger a little bit, but it kind of like in a pleasant way, I think. This one's doable for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. I, I tasted a West Coast IPA the other day and I was, I was done. There's too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so next we are drinking the India Pale Ale from Odell Brewing Company. Where's Odell? In it's Fort in Collins. Denver. Oh, nope. It's in Fort Collins. So yeah, this one says Fort Collins. And Bell's, sorry, we didn't say that. Bell's was from Michigan. Comstock, Michigan. Okay. Yeah. It's a lighter color. It really is. Look at that. I don't know if you can really tell. It also is. Yeah, clear. Kind of, what'd you say? It's more clear. Let's see. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, I think my, well, Hayes, so, so these beers really shouldn't have, they really shouldn't have um, much haze. If they, if they do have haze, it should only be very minimal. It, it might depend on whether you have a bottle or a can too. Um, yeah. Sometimes. Um, but yeah, like the, like IPA should not have, or sorry, West Coast IPA should, should be pretty clear. Okay. Um, um, and sometimes it's just, um, different breweries have different filtration methods. Okay. Um, but the style itself should be relatively clear or yeah, clear, <laughs> bright, no haze, no particulate. Um, so yeah. Um, and really like, um, let's see, I wonder if it says what hops they have in here. Um, mine just says whole flower American hops. Yeah, and it says uh, American hops create a balanced bitterness profile and a bright citrus hop character. So it should be we should be getting citrus from it. Okay, but uh, I don't want to bias you though. Yeah. Why do we cover when we swirl? 
Um, it just kind of keeps all those aromatics in there. So they're not going out into the universe before they hit your nose. Okay. What's your first impression? Grapefruit again. Do they all taste like grapefruit? You know, they might be hopped with the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> it like, also smells like grapefruit and trees. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, I think sometimes it takes, you, you know, it takes like drinking a lot of different beers. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why they're so popular is because, I mean, there's so many hop varieties just in America mm -hmm. that, I mean, people want to, people want to try different versions or different combinations or like, something like New Zealand hops are super popular right now too. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you can size the limit, kind of. But yeah, I mean, there's grapefruit. Grapefruit is something I get all the, you know, all the time. It's very okay. popular. That's like a that's like a popular IPA smell. Yeah, yeah. This one smells more bitter. I don't know if you can smell bitterness, but I perceive it just by smell as more bitter. So if you're thinking of other bitterness smells, um, like an exercise I like to do with people learning sensory is, okay, what, instead of saying like, this smells bitter, like what are other compounds, like you said, grapefruit, mm -hmm. so like other things like, like orange peel rind or um, lemon rind, or um, sometimes, sometimes like fresh, fresh coffee grounds or cocoa nibs, like those can also have bitter sort of aromas yeah um, or taste um so I like to like try and associate it with like a food or I would say and also grapefruit yeah it's that well, and also if you taste it and if you taste it and swallow it and then close your mouth and breathe back out your nose you'll get retronasal um smell <laughs> And sometimes those can be totally different than what you're smelling through your nose. Can we try that? Oh yeah, let's do it. Orange. I got, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got like orange, like I got like orange peel and like maybe a little bit of floral too, or like herbal. Yeah, I was like, that's, that is orange because it smells like grapefruit. And I didn't mm -hmm. taste orange when I drank it. But when I breathed out, I was like, holy crap, that's orange. Mm -hmm. That's kind of fun too. That is so cool. Right? Is that, is ret retro nasal? Retro nasal, yeah. So it's, it's ortho nasal when it goes through your nose and retro nasal <laughs> when it comes like back up your up your throat and the other way yeah hey. it just hits it yeah I mean it hits the same um receptors I believe but I don't think that aromatics and like understanding how we associate them um all of that's just like kind of new new science like we're trying to people scientists are still trying to figure out like how that happens or how like you totally get a different like aroma signal, like one way or the other. I don't know. That's so cool, cool right? It makes me want to drink all of my beer like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. See, it's a whole new, when you when you understand a little bit more about like what goes into the beer, I think even though maybe it's not your favorite beer to drink, like you get kind of an appreciation for it and you're like, ooh, like I'm gonna try this out and try that out. Retro nasal orange flavors, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Odell. I like the elephant on this can. I do too. I think it's great art. Should we go on to uh, Fresh Squeeze? Yes. So this is Deschutes Fresh Squeezed IPA. I like the can of this one is so. I know. This is the hot flower, right? Yes. Yes, okay. exactly. That's a hot flower. This is what a hot flower looks like, everybody. Mm -hmm. 
courtesy of Deschutes. Ooh, this one got oh, man. more of a head for me. Uh, me too, actually. And it's, I think, even darker. So, I, I think it's darker too. And Molly, this is what we call like head retention right okay. here. Yeah. So that's, that's the foam that's sitting on top of the beer itself. And really what that tells us is how complex the protein, like protein, uh, protein molecules, sugar molecules, whatever it is, how, how tight that complex is that can support this foam structure. So yeah, so the more complex it is, the, the better head retention you're gonna have. Yeah, yeah. So like beers that are really high in, um, in alcohol content or beers that have like more oils or fatty acids or anything like that are gonna have a very low head retention or no head on it because it can't support that structure. Okay, because it's too heavy. So yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah, that has a better head retention than the other two. Yeah, it does. Let's see. There's something that I really dislike smell-wise about this. Interesting, what is it? Is it an herbal smell maybe? But yeah, I'm just getting a ton of like orange and like a little bit of maybe a little bit of pine also that's that's those, those are the major things sticking out to me see this one's fun because i taste a lot more orange on the front and then the breathing out is where i get like i guess it's pine i i don't know <laughs> if my palate is sensitive enough i'm like tastes like trees on the way out <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, pine for sure. Um, it's a little bit sweeter too. It's it, a little it, bit. It is. I can taste more of the sweetness than I think I normally do in IPAs. Mm -hmm. You know, this one is more bitter than at least the than the um, two hearted. You think so? It tastes sweeter. I think it. I think it tastes a like a like slightly maltier, like a, just a little bit sweeter but I am getting more of like a bitterness um, lingering on my palate for longer after I take, take a sip. Okay. And also like bitterness is really different from person to person, like as far as perception goes, like um, we could have an IPA that's, you know, 45 bitterness units, units and another IPA that's like 75, which is, you know, that's really still a really high number, but it's going to take your palate almost a minute to actually un like actually like fully perceive that bitterness. Um, bitterness just kind of comes on very, very slowly um, in low threshold. Whereas like, like, and it's kind of evolutionary, right? Like if we tasted something sweet, we're going to get it right away because we've been, we've been trained that or like evolutionary, like evolutionarily, <laughs> We've been trained that sweetness means full of nutrients or like full of carbohydrates so we can fuel our body. Yeah. Whereas something sour or bitter means stay away. It's un it's um, bad fruit or it's bitter. That means it's toxic. So that's just kind of like how how we perceive we can perceive like a very low threshold of bitterness, mm. um, which is interesting. But it just takes us longer. It takes us longer to actually understand, like, or perceive the full amount of bitterness that's actually in the beer. So, bless you. <laughs> Can you say that one more time about? Yeah, I forget what I said. <laughs> um, as the beer warms up, um, it's a, it becomes a little bit easier to perceive flavor, some flavors and aromas too. It kind of just it depends. It's a whole experience. It's really, I just, I don't know. I've never tasted this much in them. And it's, yeah. I'm going to see if I can get all of my little cups. They <laughs> All at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do like a color comparison. It's just, that's really cool. Oh, wow. So is, is the, the darkest one, is that the fresh squeeze? 
Yeah, that's the Deschutes. So the first, okay. yeah, this was the Two Hearted, the middle was the Odell's, and the last one was the Fresh Squeeze. You can never fail with, with the Fresh Pale Ale and Molly. <laughs> Penny loves beer. Penny, do you like to drink beer? Penny. She's too young to Hi drink to Molly. Beer. Yeah, she's not old enough yet. She's basically like five years old, though, in human. Oh. She's only five months old. She's a baby girl. Penny, say hi to Aunt Molly. Hi, Penny. Hi. <laughs> hi, Penny. <laughs> hi. <laughs> what up, girl? Uh, 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 uh.